This tutorial is brought to you by one of the authors of Revising Professional Writing, now in its third edition. My students call me Dr. Kim. The publishers made this video available under a Creative Commons license. For more information, contact parlaypress.com. Remember, you can use the pause button at any time, and if you see shadows or something weird on the screen, try changing your playback quality settings. Well, the view you see here includes everything you might learn about professional writing in my tutorials. There are others that help you understand content development, organization, style, and mechanics, as well as the rhetorical context that determines which content, organization, or style is going to be effective in a specific situation. Although the primary interest in this tutorial is the style of the message itself, success can only be judged by taking into account the writer's purpose and audience. I should say that I'm going to focus on addressing audience members from Western cultures. They place a high value on efficiency. If you haven't listened to the tutorials on rhetorical context yet, especially the one on audience, I think you should. All right, this tutorial focuses on one area of style in professional writing, voice. I'm certain you've been told about passive and active voice before. However, you may not have understood what you were told, or you may have been told things that aren't accurate. In either case, it's unlikely that you've thought about why voice is important in professional writing. We'll consider the style of a letter of rejection sent to a job applicant. The letter was sent by the company to encourage the applicant to apply for a different position. I've revised the original to create two versions for our purposes. Remember the quality in the video makes it impossible for you to read the text here. If you're a student using our book, your instructor should be able to provide you with a copy or you can always download one at proswrite.com. All right, the primary audience for this letter is the applicant, that's Miss Meyer. She will be sensitive to the writer's message that she's been rejected. That means the writer has a difficult job increasing Miss Meyer's readiness to accept the letter's content. My task in this tutorial is to explain how to manipulate active and passive voice in order to choose the appropriate emphasis for a specific message. I also hope to persuade you that avoiding style problems in this letter is important. Before you can choose appropriately, you need to be able to identify verb voice, so that's where we'll start. The key is to look for a form of the verb be, followed by a verb ending in ed or en. So look at this first sentence here. Do you see a form of be? Yes, been is a form of that verb. And is there a verb form following been? Yes, filled is a verb. Does filled end in ed or en? Yes. So we know sentence one is written in passive voice. Let's try another example. Is there a form of be in sentence two? Yes, was. Now, is there a verb form following was? Yes, creating is a verb. Does creating end in ed or en? No. So, in sentence two, we know it's written in active, not passive voice. All right, let's try one more example. Is there a form of be in sentence three? Yes, that would be was. And is was followed by a verb? No. Available is not a verb. Doesn't really matter if you know what it is as long as you know that it's not a verb. The fact that it's not a verb ending in ED means that three is written in active, not passive voice. All right, now that you can identify active and passive voice, Let's discuss how to choose strategically. This requires that you understand the concept of thematic role, which explains how the same information can be distributed differently 
in an active versus a passive sentence. Look at the table shown here. Notice that the same information is conveyed in both the active, we filled the position, and the passive, the position was filled by us. Because of its initial position in a sentence, whatever appears there gets emphasis. In the active version of the sentence in the table, it's the agent, we, that's in the subject slot. In the passive version, it's the patient, the position, that's emphasized because it's up front in the subject slot. So that means active voice emphasizes the writer's organization in this sentence, while passive voice de-emphasizes the writer's organization. In fact, the passive voice allows the agent to be omitted completely. That means the writer could have written, the position was filled, without mentioning the agent at all. The critical point here is that writers should choose active voice when they believe emphasizing the agent will increase their reader's readiness to accept their message. Writers should choose passive voice when they want to de-emphasize the agent to increase the reader's readiness. The best choice is based on the rhetorical context, in other words, how sensitive the audience is to the writer's message. That means using the passive form of the message here is probably a poor strategic choice. De-emphasizing the writer's organization doesn't do anything to address the reader's feelings or needs in this specific case. Instead, it de-emphasizes the writer's responsibility. This is one reason why passive voice is often referred to as weak. Let's consider another sentence from the rejection letter. In the original, we see passive voice. Notice there's a form of B followed by a verb that ends in ED. So what's the agent of the action? In this case, it's your background and experience. Is the agent emphasized here? No, it doesn't appear in the subject slot. So what is emphasized? It's the writer's organization that gets the focus. So the big question is, do you think it's effective to emphasize the writer in this specific message? No, why would that be true in this case? The message conveys a compliment to the reader. Let's look at the revised version. It uses a more effective style for this message. It's the reader that's emphasized by putting your background and experience in the subject slot. I'll have more to say about thematic roles in the tutorial on tone. There's one more thing to consider about choosing between active and passive voice. It has to do with cohesion. In the original passage shown here, information is not arranged cohesively because active voice was chosen to emphasize the reader. It's a positive message, your credentials, right? The use of active voice in this case, though, creates a non-cohesive pattern. Perhaps that's easier to see if you look at the revised passage. Here, we is repeated in the subject slot of all three sentences. That creates a cohesive pattern. However, the first and third sentences are active voice, whereas the second is passive voice. So in this case, the best overall choice for this information is to maintain the passive voice in the second sentence in order to preserve cohesion. For more on that topic, see the tutorial devoted to it. All right, let's take a moment to check your understanding of voice by revising a sentence that comes from article on tax preparation. The specific question asks that you revise the sentence to emphasize the agent. What does that mean? Are you going to change this into active or passive voice? It means active. If you're going to emphasize the agent, it'll be an active voice. All right, first step, determine who or what functions as the agent of the action expressed in this sentence. So our programs doing the defining here? No, in fact, this must be a passive. You see a form of B? Yeah, we've got B 
been followed by a verb that ends in ed defined the agent doesn't appear in the subject slot it's the IRS that's doing the defining so to emphasize the agent requires that you make it the focus by moving it back to the subject slot that's what's done in the revision shown here we now have the content presented in active voice with the agent emphasized because it appears at the beginning of the sentence to help you understand how to achieve appropriate emphasis with voice I've been referring to a letter of rejection to a job candidate the reader is more likely to be ready to accept that rejection and the invitation to apply for a different position if the writer uses a style with effective emphasis in case you wonder why an organization should worry about the quality of the rejection letters they send research has shown that negative letters damage the public image of the organization and that can have especially negative effects if rejected candidates later become employed by competitors or vendors or even worse customers professional writers create more effective workplace messages when they strategically choose the verb voice that's most likely to increase their readers readiness whether that means choosing active voice to emphasize the agent or choosing passive voice to de-emphasize that agent in addition writers create more efficient messages when they select verb voice to create cohesive patterns of information remember that as with most aspects of style the fact that the change from active to passive in a single sentence seems small misleads many writers into thinking that their style choices are insignificant but when you consider the impact within an entire document written for an audience with low readiness to accept a message successful professionals do what they can to manage that interaction with their reader that includes choosing the most appropriate verb voice